Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to modify a mini iron so you can use it to assemble a DIY packraft kit. Check the video description to find out how to purchase an iron like this one. These irons aren't designed for use in North America, so unless the existing plug fits your electrical sockets, you'll need to use an adapter or replace the plug. To replace the plug, first cut off the old plug to see how many wires are inside the cord. Some irons have two wires and some have three. And then purchase a two or three pronged plug at your local hardware store. If there are three wires in the cord and it's unclear which one is the ground wire, open the irons housing to see how the wires are connected to the circuit board. On this board, the live and neutral wires are labeled with an L and an N and the yellow and green ground wire is unlabeled. Remove the housing from the new plug and slide it onto the cord. and then connect the wires to the plug by stripping the insulation from the ends and wrapping the exposed copper around the screws and then tightening them down. In North America, the live wire connects to the smaller of the two flat prongs. The neutral wire connects to the larger flat prong, and if there's a ground wire, it connects to the round prong. After the wires are attached to the plug, secure the cover in place. Then plug the iron in and check to make sure the light comes on. Never rest your iron on a flammable surface when it's plugged in. If yours didn't come with a stand, you can make one like this from an empty aluminum can. You should also never leave an iron unattended when it's plugged in. I made a little iron on flag to hang on the doorknob of my workshop. That way if I forget to unplug the iron, I'll be reminded on my way out the door. Before spending any more time on your iron, first make sure it heats up to an appropriate temperature for heat sealing. Check that the heating element is pushed all the way into the foot, plug the iron in, and then turn the temperature adjustment knob clockwise all the way to its highest temperature setting. I find that the adjustment knob is easily turned by accident, so after setting it, I always cover it with a piece of tape. These irons take a long time to heat up, so wait at least 15 minutes before testing yours on a scrap of heat sealable fabric. You can watch my other video about proper heat sealing technique to learn how to tell when the temperature is set correctly. If the iron never reaches a high enough temperature, you may need to purchase a transformer to convert your 110 volt North American current to the 220 volts the iron was designed for. I haven't had this problem, but I do have to set my irons to nearly full power to get them to the right temperature. You can find reasonably priced voltage converters on Amazon and elsewhere. Once you're satisfied that the iron gets hot enough, it's worth spending 20 minutes with some sandpaper to flatten the foot so more metal touches the fabric as you iron. This is kind of messy and tiresome, but it will save you lots of time later by speeding up the heat sealing process. I used a couple sheets of cheap 220 grit sandpaper, but emery cloth would probably work better, and you could finish it off with a finer grit to make a smoother surface. Whatever you do, don't use a bench grinder because the aluminum will just melt and stick to the wheel. This can actually heat up the wheel to the point where it explodes, and you definitely don't want that. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.